Welcome to this iPhone how-to tutorial series looking at the Rev Mobile development platform from RunRev. My name is Ben Beaumont, I work here at the company and over this series we're going to look um, session by session at the different features um, available on the iPhone, the basic way in which we can interact with that and then how we can go on to use it in a more advanced context. So we'll look at multi-touch this week and then go on to look at some of these other features that you see in front of you. Uh, this week we're going to try and create a small game together, quite a simple game that lets us touch multiple points of the screen to destroy multiple targets and um, hopefully it will give us a really strong handle on multi-touch and how we can interact with that using RevMobile. Okay, let's start by looking at the fundamentals behind multi-touch in RevMobile. What I've done is created a stack and I've imported two of these target images. And um, what we're going to do together is simply script the touching and moving of these objects. So we'll load the card script. And in RevMobile, we've added three new messages to handle the iPhone's touch. So we've got touch start, and that uh, is sent, that message is sent to your stack the moment somebody places their finger on an object within your stack on the iPhone screen. When they take their finger off that object, you receive a touch end message. And if they are to put their finger down on, let's say, this target, and they're to drag it around the screen and then release, throughout that full drag, you'll receive periodic touch move messages. Now, um, touch move comes with three parameters, P object ID, and the XY coordinates, so PX and PY. And all we're going to do for this example is simply move the object when we receive touch move messages. So we'll set the location of the target to those coordinates, PX, comma, PY. And that's it. So we'll save the stack. We'll go into your development menu, load the RevMobile plugin, select the multi-touch project, and start it. And there in front of you, you have our targets, which we can click and move individually. If you hold the Alt key, you'll get these two gray circles, which simulates two touches. And if you place those two gray circles over your sh over your targets and drag them around, you can see that we have in action um, multi-touch on the iPhone. Okay, so now that we've um, got a handle of the multi-touch feature set, the basic commands that we receive, let's see if we can't build a simple game together. And uh, earlier on today, I um, designed this bullseye interface, and it has nine targets. And the aim of our game is going to be quite simple. You have to destroy 20 targets as quickly as you possibly can. And as soon as you shoot and destroy a target, we'll generate a new one in its place. And there'll be nine spaces where these targets will appear. And each level, or each time they destroy one of the targets, will generate a new level. So we'll wipe the canvas and then choose a random location to display a new target for them to destroy. And to bring in multi-touch features, what we'll do is sometimes, on certain levels, we'll generate two targets in two random locations so that the person can put two fingers on to destroy the two targets at once. And once they've destroyed all 20, we'll display how quickly they did it. And so the aim of the game will be to get faster and faster and faster. So the first step to any game is building the interface. And you should have an assets folder if you've downloaded the resources. And the assets folder has a background, a game icon, reset button, start button, and the target. So we'll import them, file, import as control, images, and we'll report, and we'll import all of them. Now, the game icon isn't needed, so we just need the four. And to create an interface, we're going to use buttons as opposed to these images themselves. So what we want to do is give them an ID that's memorable. I'm going to start this at 6,000, so my target is 6,000. My start button is 6,001. And my reset button is 6,002. Then what I'm going to do is hide them. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the icon of buttons to these um, images as opposed to using the images directly. So we'll start firstly 
just by creating our start stop button. And so you want to drag a button on. I'm going to change it to a transparent button. And I'm going to take off some of these properties. Shared highlight, auto highlight, 3D, highlight border. And I'm going to set the border to zero. And um, finally, I'm going to give it a set the icon to 6001, which was our start. And we also need to just take off the show name. Now you can see that it doesn't quite fit within the bounds of the button. And if I go to size and position, you'll see we have these fit content um, buttons, which are really useful. If I click the two, it'll fit the horizontal and vertical space to fill the actual button itself. So you get it just the right size. And that's our final button. And the reason we took those properties off is that when we click this button, you'll see that nothing changes. And that's what we want. We don't want any depressed states or any borders to appear. So we should name that button. And we'll just give it the name of, let's say, Start. And then the next thing we want to do is drag on a button for our target. And we'll basically repeat the process. This time I'm going to call it Target 1. Take the show name, the auto highlight, the shared highlight off. Icons and borders, take off these three and set the icon to 6000, which is what we set our target image to. Again, we need to go to our fit content and we've missed one item off. If we go back to basic properties, you see this white background, it's because opaque is still on. So that now makes it transparent. So we'll place our button there. And now what we want to do is copy the objects and paste the objects from your menu to create our nine targets and we'll place them roughly there okay so now we have our nine targets I'm just going to select them all and move them roughly into position and the final thing we need to do is go through and just make sure they're named separately so target one target two three, four. Okay, now that we have our interface, we can bring it to life with scripts. And the majority of our coding is going to be done on the card script. And what I've done here is outline five basic um, commands and functions that we're going to use to develop this game. The first one being open card. We want to do certain actions when the game first opens to reset it. Reset game would clear the whole game and get it back to a start state. Start stop obviously starts and stops the game. Level generate will be uh, the function that um, picks one of these random nine spaces to generate a target into. Um, we're going to handle touch start. It's the only touch message we're going to use, but it's going to tell us when the user has touched one of the um, targets. And finally, um, we've got a function called target count that's going to tell us how many live targets are left. So when we generate two, put maybe this this one and this one are, are generated for a multi-touch. Um, when when the user touches one of them, uh, we need to check how many um, targets are actually left on the canvas to ensure that all targets have been destroyed before we generate the next level. Okay, so let's start by um, looking at open card. When the card opens or when we load the app, all we want to do is reset the game. So in this case, all we have to do is type game reset. That's going to call this handler here. Now, on game reset, what we want to do is we want to return the button to its start state and generate all the targets on the screen. So the way we do that is, first of all, let's just repeat with x equals 1 to 9. We've got nine buttons. We want to repeat through them. We want to set the icon back to 6,000. So set the icon of button. Now, our buttons are called target plus the number they are. So target, and then ampersand depends, x. So what we're getting here is, as it repeats through, target x which will replace it with 1 to 9. So we'll get target 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So set the icon of button target 1 to 6,000. Okay. The next thing we want to do on game reset is make sure the button is on um, that icon. 